Hi friends and welcome. Today we're talking CloudFront, which is Amazon's content delivery network or CDN, basically a distributed network all around the world that gets content to users faster through caching. If you look at the CloudFront map here, you'll see there's tons of locations, currently more than 450 points of presence, 13 regional edge caches, 90 plus cities across 49 countries. So no matter where you are in the world, chances are that Amazon can cache content close to you or close to your users so that you get it with really low latency. Let me walk you through a quick diagram of how this works, and then we'll go out to CloudFront and actually build a distribution together in the console. So how this works, we have the origin of the content. This could be an S3 bucket, an EC2 instance, API gateway, really anything that can serve up content over HTTP. It could even be on premises. So let's say that we have a picture of a cat who helps with puzzles. I might know something about this cat. And then the origin is connected to a CloudFront edge location so that when a user goes to request the picture of the cat, CloudFront says, do I already have this picture cached? If the answer is yes, then just return the cached version. And if the answer is no, then I'll go fetch it from the origin and cache it for next time. So that when the next user comes and wants to get a cat picture, or the next thousand users or whatever, we're able to say, yes, I have that cached, which is going to be way faster than going back to the origin to fetch it. So with that high level theory, let's go do some hands on. In this demo, we'll upload our cat picture and an index.html page to an S3 bucket, and then we'll set up S3 to work with CloudFront so we can go load the web page with the picture and see CloudFront in action. So out here in the AWS console, the first thing we need to do is create an S3 bucket to hold our index.html page and our cat picture. So I'll just navigate to S3, and I'll create a new bucket. I'll call this puzzle cat, and today's date for something unique. We can leave the defaults on everything else. We are going to block all public access, and later we'll see how we can still allow CloudFront to access things, so no worries there. Default to everything else, and then create bucket. And success, let's navigate to the bucket, and then we'll upload our files. So I'll click on Upload. I've got the files here on my local drive. So I've got a picture of the cat, and then a super simple index.html page. Let me just quickly show you the code for that. So nothing fancy here. We've just got a hello world header, need help with your puzzles, and then we're pulling in that cat picture. So I'll select both of these files and then drag them to my S3 bucket, and then say upload. And success, let me close. Now you remember that these are not publicly accessible, so if I were to try to open up this cat picture here, I'll get an access denied message. There are ways that you can open it here using the open button, and this will basically generate a pre-signed URL that gives you temporary access. But for this demo, that's not really what we're interested in. We want CloudFront to be able to access these files and serve them up to anybody in the world. So let's go work on that part next for CloudFront. I'll open up a new tab here, navigate to CloudFront, and it all starts with the CloudFront distribution, which we'll create. There is quite a bit included in the free tier, so if you're just getting started, this will likely be free. If you're outside of the free tier, then you've got the pricing down here. But I will walk you through how to delete things at the end as well, so no worries there. Let's create a new distribution. The first thing we need is an origin domain. So thinking back to our slides, that's the part on the far right. In our case, we're using an S3 bucket, so that's what we want to choose here. I'll filter down by typing in puzzle. There's my puzzle cat bucket. And then down here under origin access, let's set this to the recommended setting, which will give CloudFront access to the things in the bucket, but nothing else. Most of the times that's what you're going to want. And then we also need to set up what's called the origin access control. 
I don't have one right now, so we'll need to create a new one. And here you can also go with the defaults to sign requests, and your origin type is going to be S3, since we're using the S3 bucket, and then Create. Now, very importantly, we're going to need to update our S3 bucket policy. And this policy is going to allow access to the CloudFront IAM role. And very conveniently, CloudFront is actually going to generate this policy for you. Then we just need to copy and paste it into S3. It'll give us a nice reminder at the end that we need to do that, but just a heads up here. Scrolling down, we can pretty much keep defaults for everything else. You do need to say whether you want to enable Web Application Firewall or WAF. For our case, we're going to keep it super simple and say no. And then there's one other item, the default root object here. We're going to make this index.html, basically our home page in our case for our simple website. Scrolling down, we'll create distribution. Now remember earlier there was that message about needing to update our S3 bucket policies, and it gives us a really handy reminder and a way to just copy that here. So I'm going to click on this button to copy the policy to my clipboard, and then we can actually go right to the S3 bucket. I'll open this in a new tab here on the Permissions tab, which it should bring you to by default. Remember that we're blocking all public access, and so we need this policy down here to basically allow CloudFront to access things here. To paste that in, we'll need to say Edit, then just paste in the policy here that was on the clipboard. And this policy is saying to allow CloudFront to read or get object the things in this PuzzleCat S3 bucket. And then scrolling down, make sure you save that. So S3 should be good. Let's go back to our CloudFront distribution and see how that's coming along. I'll close out of this. Now you will get this message saying successfully created distribution, but don't let that fool you. If you look at the last modified here, you'll see that it says deploying. It's not actually done until you get a date and time in there. So I'll give it just a minute. This can take a little while. I'll pause the video and come back when it's ready. All right, it looks like that worked. We've got a date time in the last modified now. So now to test out our web page and our cat photo, we can just copy the distribution domain name right here. I'll open up a new tab. And behold the cat. So this is the index.html page, pulling in the cat picture. Both of those are in the S3 bucket. Now, neither of these files are really large enough to notice a difference from caching, but this first time when I came to the page, CloudFront checked to see if these were cached. Obviously, it wasn't, since this is the first time I'm navigating here. So it went to the S3 bucket, grabbed the files, it's displaying them here, and it's also cached them. So if I were to refresh the page now, now this is the cached copy. And if you were to go to this link right now, you would get the cached copy as well which if I had a much larger file or you were much farther away, it would make load times a lot faster and give you better performance. So that's really the whole point of CloudFront, caching your content so that your users can get to it faster. Now, if you're following along, very important that you delete your resources. Let me walk you through how to do that. Let's start with our CloudFront distribution. So if you back up to all your distributions, choose the one that you were just working on, and you'll need to disable it. You can't delete it first. You have to disable it, and then it takes a couple of minutes before you can delete it. So let's get that started. Disable. While we're waiting for that, let's go back to our S3 bucket. We'll delete everything there as well. So coming into Buckets, and my Puzzle Cat bucket, I'll select this and say Delete. Now, a bucket is supposed to be empty before you can delete it, but there's a handy link here that will let you empty the bucket. Just need to type in permanently delete. So that's empty. And then up here, you can actually go delete the bucket now. Type in the name of the bucket, or copy-paste the name of the bucket, delete. 
Let's come back to our distribution to see what's going on here. I'll do a refresh. You'll see the last modified is deploying, so it's still making changes. If I were to select this, you'll see the delete is still grayed out. So I'll give it another minute or two, come back, and then there's one other thing we need to delete. So don't go away just yet. And I'm back. It looks like everything completed. So if I click on this first one here, I can now delete. Delete. And then the other thing you want to get rid of is the origin access over here. I had two just because I was playing with something else earlier. But select the origin access that you created. You probably just have one. And then say delete. And delete. And you should be good to go. If you found that helpful, give me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.